a follow up to my previous show when I talked about the Weinard landslide and the many other tragedies that are breaking in our world. I spoke then about the fact that this is about climate change, but it is also not about climate change. Today I want to discuss and go deeper into what happened in Weinard. And I also want to discuss a very critical issue, something that is worrying me and should worry all of us, that why is it the people who live in these extremely vulnerable area are actually opposed to any effort for conservation? It seems as if they are literally cutting the very branch that they are sitting on. They live there, they know that they are vulnerable and yet they oppose any measure to protect the area. What then is the way ahead? I'm Sunita Narayan and thank you so much for watching my show and I very much look forward to our further interactions as we move ahead. So let's understand what happened in Vainad. The landslide happened close to a place called Mundakai. This is a region of the Western Ghats in Kerala. The name of the village is Velerimala. My colleague Rohini Mukhi and Pulaha Roy have taken a close look at this village and the region around it. They find that this disaster was actually waiting to happen. Why? Let me explain. So Velerimala is a village that was identified as an ecologically sensitive area. This is as per the 2013 Kasturi Rangan report. The K Kasturi Rangan committee, which I spoke about, is a committee that was set up by the Union Ministry of Environment and Forests. And it recommended that all such villages in the Western Ghats, where over 20% of the village was ecologically sensitive, or was in the natural landscape, had forests, had biodiversity rich area, was in the watershed, was in a landslide prone area, all these villages should be protected as ecologically sensitive. This committee therefore recommended that no destructive activities should be allowed in such villages. What do I mean by destructive activities? They came up with a list, but the most crucial and the most important part of it was that no mining and no quarrying would be allowed in any of the villages which were now protected as ecologically sensitive. In November 2013, the Ministry of Environment and Forest accepted in principle this report and they issued a notification under the Environment Protection Act, the EP Act as it is known. This is section 5 of the EP Act. Now under the section 5 of the EP Act, it is a binding notification, it is a directive. Now under this directive they have said that the Western Ghats is now identified as an ecologically sensitive area and within that 60,000 square kilometers will be protected. And this notification they have directed that no mining, no quarrying will be allowed. No red category polluting industries can come up, no large settlements can come up. These were all activities deemed to be highly polluting, destructive and would make the area even more vulnerable. So this is a notification issued in 2013. It is binding and this remains binding even as the ministry is working with the state governments to issue yet another notification declaring this region as ecologically fragile. The catch is that the Kerala government made a representation saying that this identification of the ecologically sensitive villages would not work for the state of Kerala. Why? They said in our case a number of villages have lot of other activities. For instance, it could have buildings, it could have other things that 
uh, are necessary and so you cannot protect the entire village. You can protect only a certain part of the village which can be demarcated as ecologically sensitive. This logic was accepted by the union government and in 2018 an amendment was issued and now instead of the roughly 60,000 square kilometers of area, it is close to 56,800 square kilometers. Now what then has happened in Kerala? So Pulaha took the map of 13 villages in Vaina district. These were under the Kasturi Rangan report identified at ESA, but as I said, later on the protection was removed because of the representation from the Kerala government. He superimposed on these ecologically sensitive villages sites of quarrying. He found that 15 quarrying sites across 13 villages. Please understand. In this ecologically sensitive region, now you have active quarrying sites. These villages should have been protected as ESA under the Kasturi Rangan report, but because of the exemption sought and given to Kerala, quarrying is allowed in the village in that same region. Take the village of Nulpura also in this ecologically sensitive area, also in the Western Ghats, also a village where we have seen landslides happen. This single village has six quarrying sites and many of them were located in the forest. Now clearly we should not be surprised that when extreme rain hits the region, it leaves behind the scale of devastation. This is definitely man-made. Now what is even worse is what my colleague Rohini dug out. She found that in 2017, the Kerala government amended its minor mineral concession rules. And now it allows explosives to be used within just beyond 50 meters of a residential house or a forest. Just consider. What is 50 meters? It is literally saying that you can blast in my backyard. Now it is those use of explosives which will also make the hillsides even more vulnerable. It will destabilize that region. Now this is why we say that this landslide and the tragedy behind it is about climate change because you got extreme rainfall but it is not also about climate change. I was a member of the Kasturi Rangan committee and I know that when we traveled across the region through the different states of the Western Ghats there was strident opposition to any efforts to conserve the Western Ghats. People were out on the streets, there were dharnas, there was protest against the committee and about any efforts that would lead to enhanced protection. Politicians were against this, so were influential leaders. You can argue that these people are all swayed by vested interests, but the fact is there is widespread anger. And the fact also is you cannot do conservation against the will of people. And this is the question that we asked was why are people so against protection of the Western Ghats? This is when they know that they live in a vulnerable region. They know that they are most susceptible when the rain comes to landslides. It will destroy their properties, take away their lives. They know. Let's be very clear, they are wise people. They understand vulnerability as even you and I don't understand, as even scientists don't understand. Why then? A fear, an apprehension. They are worried that government would take over their plantations. This of course is plantation area. And they were worried that in the name of conservation, these lands would be nationalized. They would lose their uh, livelihoods. They would lose their lands. 
They were worried also that if there was efforts to protect these areas, they would under, be under the dictates of local officials who may tell them that they will have to do organic farming and that the cost of these farming systems would go up. They would not be compensated. They would lose again their livelihoods. They in fact often argued and they talk about the fact, talk to us about the fact, about the fear that now they would not be allowed to cut trees on their own lands and that they would be under constant uh, threat, under constant pressure from local officials. So they understood their vulnerability and yet they would prefer not to be protected. Now this is where we need to understand that we have to do conservation differently. We cannot do conservation against the will of people. We cannot do conservation unless they are made partners in the efforts to conserve these and protect these lands. So in fact, in the Kasturi Rangan report, and I say this with some, um, with some sort of, you know, um, emphasis that we had laid out a package that would need to go along with the protection. And in that package, we had recommended that government could come up with a debt for nature swap so that the state's debt could be swapped for the protection of these lands. We talked about how the money had to reach the communities who were now being asked not to mine, not to quarry, but to protect the forests as forests. We had recommended that the Finance Commission, the 13th Finance Commission, which had actually mandated that states should be paid for protecting forests as forests, that this amount of money should be increased. And we had said that this money should go into the hands of communities, not to the state exchequer. Sadly, that recommendation of the 13th Finance Commission was further diluted in the 14th and was actually taken away in the subsequent Finance Commission. We also said, value the ecosystem in which people live. You and I are talking about why these ecosystems are important. They're important because they provide water. They're important because of their biodiversity services. So let's value the ecosystem and then make sure that the money reaches the community. We further said, and I, we believe that this is the way ahead, is that let's build a forest-based economy. Today, you plant trees, but you cannot cut them. You cannot regrow them because you cannot cut them. So how can you build a wood-based economy which would put money in the hands of people? Essentially, we were arguing that if you are coming up with a package for protection, then please compensate the people who will protect these lands and put money in their hands so that they value the conservation. They become partners in the efforts for conservation. That was never done. So I believe that if we want to protect and conserve because we know we need to do that in an, incre in an age of climate change. We will also have to do that in a way that we change the way we do conservation, the model of conservation, so that people become part of this. So we have to rebuild the nature-people relationship and make people partners in conservation, not its enemy. And as the case of Aynard shows, we need to do this urgently. We have literally run out of time.